at the Global Investors Summit in Andhra Pradesh. Joining us today with the print is State's IT and Industries Minister, Gudiwada Amarnath. Thank you for speaking to the print. Let's look at the kind of MOUs you've signed from yesterday. A lot of them, a lot of MOUs, the Chief Minister has said that this means lakhs of crores of investment. But how many of these MOUs are going to translate into reality is a bigger question. And what mechanism will the state look at to make them into reality? See, after we came, came into power in 2019, and in the recent three and a half years, we have a track record. Probably we didn't have uh, this kind of summits happen before in the state in the last three years. But we have track record of 89% realization of MOUs into realistic investment. So, we will be probably pitching at the same uh, uh, percentage. The Honorable CM have just announced on the stage that we are going to have a monitoring committee for all the MOUs. Under the leadership of the Chief Secretary, we will be having a Special Chief Secretary Industries and the other de department uh, people will be holding meetings every week uh, regarding the, the MOU, MOUs so that uh, at the earliest stage they can come into consideration and realize the investment in the state. Right. So, uh, we have seen from Ambani, Adani to a lot of companies of different levels come in yesterday, announce investments. So what is the pitch that Andhra government has laid to these investors that has attracted them? Vizag being separately, but I am understanding these investments are across the state. Across you know? the state is not, this summit is not for Vishakapatnam. This summit is for the state. See, any investor who goes to any place in the country or any place in the world looks at the governance first. The leadership of the uh, uh, space, the leadership of the state, the leadership of the country. So, the, the credibility of the uh, leader, Jagan Mohan Redigaru, brought in these kind of investments to the state. And the other, other infrastructure facilities like water, like power, like, uh, like land availability, like abundant uh, natural resources. So, these are the common areas where every state has. But a leader like Jagan Mohan Redigaru, who is credible, who is confident, and who gives support to the, all the industrialists who are there in Andhra Pradesh and that uh, uh, confidence and credibility brought these investments to the state. That's fair enough when you talk, spoke about the natural resources, land, the land that government is ready to give to these industrialists who are coming in. But you know there's also competition from cities, developed cities like Hyderabad which is close by. So how is Andhra faring in that? What's different in Andhra that's attracting investments here? If you could be a little yeah, particular. See when you look at Hyderabad, Hyderabad is not uh, a city uh, which was developed on its own. It was a mixture of all people from Andhra Pradesh as well. It's a, we are just a new state. We are growing big. We are growing in all, all sectors uh, of industry. Uh, Vishakapatnam will be uh, a competitive city to cities like Hyderabad and Bangalore. We are, we are one of the ninth richest city in the country. We are the fastest growing city in the world, uh, in, in the Asia. So definitely cities like Vishakapatnam or cities like Tirupati or Anandpur uh, where we are creating IT ecosystems because Anandpur is a place where uh, which is close to Bangalore airport. When you go to uh, IT city in Bangalore from the Bangalore airport it will take almost two, two and a half hours. When you come to Anandpur from Bangalore airport it's just one hour. So we are creating ecosystems at Anandpur and in Tirupati and we have already have an ecosystem in Vishakapatnam for the IT cities. So when there is IT and there is cosmopolitan culture in that uh, area, there is always development. So we will be creating these ecosystems in these specific areas. Right. From what I understand, you mentioned Vishakapatnam will more be like an IT capital, a competitive city coming up. So what will change in Vishakapatnam in the coming days? How is the state going to get Vishakapatnam ready to become an IT capital? See, IT uh, in Vishakapatnam, we, have, uh, we are promoting Vishakapatnam as a beach IT destination. Because you, you never see this kind of environment for an IT sector in anywhere in the country. So you have uh, uh, beaches on one side, you have nice hills on the other side. We have IT hills. We call the IT park as IT hills because the, all the uh, offices are on the hills where we have uh, uh, beautiful beaches surrounding by. And we have the skill power also um, because info companies like Infosys are coming to Vishakhapatnam to, to set up the shop. What's the main reason? It's not the reason because it's beautiful. We have, we have the skilled workforce everywhere because uh, in companies like Infosys, they have almost 3,000 people working uh, in different parts of the country from Vishakapatnam. So they are trying to set up a shop in Vishakapatnam by uh, in another 45 days. So we are pitching in all the other uh, major uh, IT companies like TCS, like IBM and uh, uh, Wipro we are speaking with them to ask asking them to open a thousand seater in Vishakapatnam. 
So definitely, uh, this ecosystem will build the city of Vishakhapatnam to a greater heights, which will be a next global IT destination to the country. Right. So you're also pitching to the IT employees that for a weekend getaway you have a beach here. If I'm not <laughs> wrong. A lot of beach, a lot right. Of yes. So also let's look at investments before we let you go. There have been a lot of investments, a lot of foreign investments. If you could just give us a little detail of what kind of investments do we have? How many foreign investors were here at this global investor summit? Yeah, we had different sessions from the UAE. We had a um, session from Netherlands. We had a session. From the Western Australia, we had a session, um, and a lot of ambas ambassadors from different countries came. Uh, some, some of the consular generals from France, uh, from Malaysia, uh, some of them from different parts of Africa also came for looking at the minerals and all. So we have we had almost a presence of 25 to 20, 30 countries uh, in the summit. We had a, a mutual action from the European Union Chamber of Commerce. We had a representation where we had an MOU uh, for ch exchange of commerce and uh, other trade activities. So definitely, it is going to be a, a game changer to the state so of Andhra Pradesh. The countries that you mentioned, they've also agreed to invest in Andhra Pradesh. See, this is just a starting. Um, we'll definitely take up uh, uh, the issue to the uh, to the higher levels. We'll discuss because when you go to an investment with the other countries or partner with other countries we need to have some discussion with the central government as well so we'll have the those discussions and we'll come back later Quick last question uh, up until the mous that were signed up until now on day two of the global investor summit how much percentage of it was with foreign companies versus indian i i, I need to check with that and get, get back to you a rough estimate <laughs> no i can't let, tell you. that's what we have the credibility uh, let, let us tell you with the actual figures All right. thank you so much well that was gudivar amarnath industries minister of andhra pradesh talking about the investments, the MOUs that we signed and how the state government is going to set up a monitoring committee to make sure all of these massive hundreds of MOUs signed become a reality. This is Rishika Sadam from Vizac in Andhra Pradesh for the print.